Hey, we are two Star Wars nerds, and we are going to be talking about this article right here from a Star Jedi Wars code. Gamer magazine. Yeah, it says, Understanding the Jedi Code, a new perspective from Jedi Master Mace Windu. And very briefly before we even get into it, essentially what we want to do is... Learn more about the Jedi Code. Yeah, and document the process of kind of our uh, deep dive into the EU. You know, maybe you're um, a little bit like us and like you've, you've read things in the EU or Legends and you're a little bit discontent with the current state of things or you just you know what want to get excited about star wars again um that's a perfect place for you because we're just gonna read this and geek out in a galaxy far far away so obviously you know jedi code there's no emotion there's peace there's no ignorance there's knowledge there's no passion there's serenity there's no death there is the force certainly a jedi should know the code by word and by heart but seemingly every Jedi in some fashion negligent from the lowest Padawan to the highest master. Consen er, consequently, consequently <laughs> were someone to demand what is the true meaning of the Jedi code. The Jedi who promptly answered would be rare indeed. So even right off the bat, we're just seeing that this is a difficult thing to understand. But you know what? Mace Windu, Master Wace, Master Wace, Master Wa Mace. <laughs> Has the answers. I think he's a good one to present it. Yeah. Um, and so begins the famous commentary upon the Jedi Code by Master Odon Ur, written almost 4,000 years ago. His musings on the proper behavior of a Jedi have formed the foundation of today's Jedi Order. Odon Ur's ancient wisdom have has held true for centuries. Many are taught the Jedi Code, but few fully understand it. Fewer still live by it. Those who do are truly Jedi Masters. Full comprehension of the code, then, is the key to unlocking the Force. So, if you want the key to unlocking the Force, Here we go. you're in the right place. The path within the code. At its most basic level, the Jedi Code is a set of guidelines explaining for a Padawan what virtues to prize and what flaws to avoid. Instructors ask their students that if they remember nothing else, to always keep these words in mind. The reason is simple. In these four lines lies the instructions for how to become a Jedi Master. Consider the first rule. There is no emotion. There is peace. It is plainly a contrast distinguishing the confusion of emotional considerations from the clear thinking of peaceful meditation. Obviously, a valuable quality. Yeah. But if that peace is rooted in simply being unaware of some factor that would otherwise cause a Jedi to feel an emotional reaction, then it is not so much peace as ignorance. That is why the code contains a second rule. There is no ignorance. There is knowledge. This teaches Jedi to strive for understanding of all situations, particularly before acting, to better avoid errors in judgment. But again, knowing the thing well can lead one to become engrossed in it. Engrossment leads to clouding of the mind. Thus, the third rule, there is no passion, there is serenity. Knowing a thing objectively is knowing it as the Force knows it. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Still, students commonly argue that the only true objectivity is non-existence, death. For does one not affect a thing even by merely observing it? This is why there is the fourth rule. There is no death, there is the Force. The Force knows all things objectively. It is serene, and it is not swayed by emotion. Thus, the Jedi Code teaches that before understanding or before undertaking any action, the Jedi should consider the will of the Force. Master Odon Ur said, with these other considerations aside, all that remains is the Force. What he meant by this was that if a Jedi can act emotionlessly, knowledgeably, and ser uh, serenely, then he is acting in accordance with the will of the Force. Therefore, if a Jedi acts in all things without emotion, ignorance, or passion, then that Jedi is truly a master of the Force. It's a hard way to live, but yeah. I yeah I see why Anakin was not granted the rank of master. Yes, and you kind of see Boy, you see why they had this concept of taking younglings, Force sensitive mm -hmm. younglings, to train them um, because of the propensity to. You know, when you get into attached, like, things start to make a lot more sense. Right. Do you think if Anakin was granted Master, he would have still ended up as Darth Vader? I 
because it wouldn't have been good for him. It would have just made him more like prideful. Yeah, yeah. Um, if he were to have been granted master, I think eventually, yes. I think it was inevitable yeah. that he would become Darth Vader, especially with Sidious's evil plan. Evil plan. Interpreting the code. While the code is a straightforward map to the mastery of the Force, it can sometimes be frustrating to put into practice. The galaxy has changed a great deal since the Jedi Code was defined, and a great deal more since Master Odon Ur attempted to clarify it. Although the secret to the code is considering it thoroughly before acting, the universe often does not afford a Jedi the time to do so, before forcing her to act. Still, a Jedi can think through a great many things in advance so as to better prepare for when the rest of the universe is in a hurry. Over the millennia since the founding of the Order, Jedi Masters have recognized that there are eight conclusions a Jedi can reach before the situations are thrust upon him. A Jedi who understands these eight things will, when called upon to make a quick decision, already know the will of the Force. Wow. It's... <laughs> And it's in a sense, again, you know, like how George borrows from things, you know, be ready, you know, preach the word, be ready in and out of season. It's essentially what you're getting to. Um, Master Odon Ur remarked upon some of these items and the commentaries of other Jedi masters over the centuries, including Master Yoda, have formed the basis for the current expanded code taught to Jedi Padawans all across the galaxy. Presented below are those eight conclusions. One, meditation. Odon Ur wrote every Jedi should spend time meditating each day on the will of the Force. It just makes me think of the I feel like every video on this reminds me of The Office. How, how, what, what's the connection here? When Dwight says every morning. Oh, when he deals with the stress. Yeah. Every morning I do this, every lunch I do this, every sun, sunset. That's awesome. The reason is simple. If one has unwittled unwittingly acted contrary to the will of the force recognizing the mistake soon after might still give one time to make amends what master odon ur left unsaid was that by regularly examining one's motive own motivations a jedi could be certain that she was not allowing emotion ignorance or passion to intrude upon her clarity a jedi ha who has no time to meditate may more easily become lost more to the point a jedi who refuses to meditate may already know that her motivations are not pure, and is thus lying to herself. As Master Yoda once said, the Jedi who heeds not the counsel of the Force to the dark side listens. Mm. Quite the morning. And you do have uh, pre-digitized Puppet he looks, Yoda. He looks good there. Yeah, he looks, he looks all right, man. He looks, he looks okay. Training. Master Vodo said, a Jedi's training in the Force never ends. A wise Jedi should strive to remember that there is always something more to learn about the Force. The Force reveals itself to those who have the desire and knowledge to see it, and heeding only the Force's will is much the same as looking at a Bantha's toe and saying, now I understand Banthas. To, or to continue to grow, a Jedi should train each day. I love that. I love that vision. I'm going to use that. I'm just going to call people out and tell them, you're just looking at the Bantha's toe. Like, <laughs> you know, like, what is this guy's problem? Loyalty. Jedi can exist in this universe because the Force exists. Very good point. But the Jedi Order needs more. It requires loyalty. It goes without saying that a Jedi should be loyal to one another and not squabble or fight. More importantly, though, each Jedi should be aware that he must act in accordance with the wishes of his master, who in turn, or who must in turn act in accordance with the wishes of the Jedi Council. This is not a question of seniority, but rather of understanding the will of the Force, and in this regard, the members of the Jedi Council are the recognized experts. This, this reminds me so much of like reading about like monastic rules. Yeah. and monastic ways of life yeah. it's actually a very very similar yeah it's yeah, a why we're like reading this and i feel a lot of wisdoms are in this yeah yeah they are for sure and i disproportionately read about monastic rules it's a separate thing so i'm like this is crazy there's like i have a question though so yeah. in our context we have the bible mm -hmm. as christians um now 
this is a Star Wars is very different, obviously. Um, but even just these four pages is filled with a lot of stuff that would be hard to remember. Do they have some sort of do the Jedi have some sort of like Jedi Bible or Jedi so, book that has? Yeah, yeah, there there is, and there's even some stuff in. Um, there's like the Book of the Sith, like the Book of Jedi, I okay. think. So there's some stuff that's even like in Legends. You could like we can buy real okay. world. We can buy and read, and it has like notes of these masters on the side and stuff. Okay. So they would have to remember those four statements, and then they would also have to understand these eight subpoints. I feel like I don't are, understand these eight subpoints that are commentary. Sure. Well, because you don't meditate on the will of the Force every day. It's true, I don't. So. You know, to ignore that to be, is to become a Jedi. Yeah. You just look at the Bantha's toe. <laughs> okay. Integrity. A Jedi's responsibility to the Force is to be honest with himself. This does not mean that he must be forthright with everyone else, however. Hmm. That one just caused a me to Jedi's pause. responsibility to the Force is to be honest with himself. So you have room. Okay, we'll, we'll keep reading, but you have room to lie, essentially. You have to be honest with yourself, but you don't have to be forthright. Or maybe you don't have to tell others, not necessarily lie. So this is kind of saying where white lies are acceptable. Possibly. To protect let's, others. Let's see how, how the commentary expands. Okay. Master Odon Ur lamented the misperceptions of those who believed that Jedi should be morally superior. Huh. Many feel that a Jedi should be scrupulously honest, never taking advantage, and never withholding information. This is nonsense. From a certain point of view, a Jedi is not being dishonest if he allows people to believe what they wish to believe. Hmm. A Jedi can and should offer advice to those who need it, but it is not incumbent upon the Jedi to convince anyone to follow his advice. In service to the Force, a Jedi may employ deception, okay, subterfuge, misdirection, and even fraud if he does so with a righteous aim. It makes me think of in Clone Wars where Obi-Wan dresses up like that. The baldy one? <laughs> is that, that's what i call him baldy one uh i guess it's not really dressing up yeah he, he like mm -hmm. becomes sure it's, yeah it's more than just put on a costume it's but, like undercover and, and yeah. deception yeah although most sentient creatures have a distaste for such practices the forces without such emotions do not confuse this with moral flexibility a jedi does what needs to be done but also remember that a jedi is not above the law that's the most controversial one so far. Yeah. Morality. The most dangerous quotation ever uttered by a Jedi master is a Jedi is not a creature of morals. These words have unfortunately been translated often by Jedi to mean that a Jedi can do no wrong. It actually means that Jedi are not enforcers of morality. While Jedi can bring or restore order and justice, they cannot themselves sit in judgment of others. There are two reasons for this. I like how they have the council picture right here. But <laughs> first, the galaxy is a vast place full of cultures that no one Jedi can completely understand. One famous story tells how a Jedi learned that a companion had been devoured by the cannibalistic colicoids. When asked why the Jedi later bargained with the very same creatures for starship components, she responded, because eating the flesh of sentient creatures is not forbidden by the Jedi Code. But to the colicoloids, uh, not eating the flesh of sentience is considered a sign of insanity. Interesting. The Jedi recognize that punishing the colicoloids for acting according to their nature would be acting out of emotion and ignorance. Similarly, not procuring a badly needed engine part would have been punishing herself out of guilt. The second reason is that judgment leads to vengeance, and vengeance leads to the dark side. This is easy to understand, though not so easy to practice. Should a known murderer be allowed to go free? Should a man intent on murder be killed? To answer either question, a Jedi must first know the will of the Force. Neither decision can be made hastily, except where lives are threatened by inaction. There's a ton of room for manipulation there. Yep. And you can then see how they kind of like fall subject to the will of the Republic. Mm-hmm. Discretion. Although or though Master Odon Ur believed in justice, he also understood that it was sometimes necessary for a Jedi to practice discretion. The galaxy will live in tranquility 
if certain matters are a bit overlooked or left unheard. Some have seen this as a sign of Jedi partisanship. Others, particularly law enforcement agencies, believe that Jedi ignore small crimes in order to apprehend criminals, right? To apprehend greater criminals. So small crimes for greater criminals. Obviously, neither of these is true. The truth is that Jedi Knights are suffered throughout the galaxy, despite our facility with the Force. This is because we do not actively interfere with the lives of the common people. Jedi stand for order and justice, and these qualities do not begin with the misdeeds of the few. The goal of the Jedi should be to create and preserve an atmosphere in which justice can flourish rather than try to create justice herself. Master Yoda has often said that should the Republic ever challenge the Jedi Order's right to exist, the support of the common citizen will see us through. If fear us, they do. Help us, they will not. If hate us, they do. Hunt us, they will. Hmm. Interesting. It's a lot happening. Yeah. <laughs> Bravery. Master Odon Ur said to be brave in battle proves nothing. Bravery itself proves nothing. A Jedi should be prepared to put aside fear, regret, and uncertainty and either fight, run, surrender, or die. A common mistake among younger Jedi is that bravery is the opposite of fear, and since fear leads to the dark side, bravery is the armor against the dark side. Not so. If a Jedi is mindful of the will of the Force, he will know whether it is best to stand his ground or flee, or even to offer truce. Remember that bravery itself is an emotion, and a Jedi should be at peace even in the midst of war. That's interesting. Very interesting. Because essentially it's not saying like, do do the thing you're scared of. It's saying sometimes being brave is running away, which, you know, there could be wisdom in that, I suppose, but interesting. Fighting. Sadly, we live in a galaxy where conflict is a fact of life for far too many beings for us to remain part of it, apart from it. But we need not embrace conflict. Master Odon Ur said if a Jedi ignites his lightsaber, he must be ready to take a life. If he is not so prepared, he must keep his weapon at his side. And as Master Yoda teaches, if a weapon you show, a warrior am I, you say. And who is best all Ur? And who is best must all other warriors know of you. So to avoid unnecessary fighting, a Jedi should not advertise a skill. But when it is when is it necessary to fight? The Force will show a Jedi when he has no other options, and a wise Jedi trusts the Force in this regard. When fighting, it is necessary or is it necessary to use one's lightsaber? The answer is no. The lightsaber is an intimidating weapon, but it is not a tool for intimidation. That's good. This is what Odon Ur meant. Do not use a lightsaber to create fear in an opponent. Use it to end the fight as quickly and mercifully as possible. That puts lightsaber duels in a totally different perspective. Yeah, for real. Like, even for like Revenge of the Sith mm -hmm. with Anakin and Obi-Wan thinking that it's to put someone out of their misery, you know, quickly essentially, and to end a conflict, but crazy. If this means destroying the opponent, so be it. But if a Jedi can end a fight without killing an opponent, so much the better. The best Jedi can avert injury altogether with only a word. In the past, some Jedi have taken this to mean that they should carry a second, less deadly weapon. There is no such thing. So uncivilized. If a weapon cannot kill, it is truly or it is not truly a weapon. While a blaster can let a Jedi attack at a distance, it is just as effective and more in keeping with the Jedi Code to use the Force instead. This is why all the greatest Jedi carry only a single lightsaber as their weapon, a tool uniquely attuned for use with the Force. And that is the Jedi Code. Oh, that's it. That's it. Wow. So those who carry two lightsabers... So, what did that mean there at the end? Saying you d you don't carry a blaster oh, as okay. a Jedi, you only carry a lightsaber. A single lightsaber. All the greatest Jedi, I guess. Yeah, for like a dual saber. 
wielder. I don't know. Because who are the dual saber? I, I, can I, like I, I can't. Soda. I can't name off all of them. I don't know. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know about dual sabers, but the point is single lightsaber, no other weapon. But it's a lot. That is a lot. And so, you know what? This is quite the deep dive into this right here. These four lines. And then Master Odon Ur has eight points and Mace Windu's contemplations on those points and how you would be taught as a Jedi Padawan, Knight, Master. Makes a lot of sense, like I said, with Anakin. Yeah, tremendous amount. But with that, we already reached a lengthy video. <laughs> we are two Star Wars nerds. May the Force be with you always. always. Thank you.